So Sam, uh, I'm very happy to introduce Richard Merg. He's VP of Sales and Marketing at Bioclinica. Uh, Richard was appointed to the position of uh, Vice President Global Business Development uh, when he rejoined Bioclinica after two successful years at MedNet Solutions as Chief Revenue Officer. Uh, uh, Richard previously spent 11 years at Bioclinica, during uh, which time he led the North American software business development, uh, and he is now tasked with software business expansion across global markets, working closely uh, with the team on product development. And so, Richard, I'm really looking forward to your talk. Thank you for the introduction, doctor. All right. Uh, and we are now sharing. Perfect. So greetings, everybody. Welcome uh, from Southern California. Uh, today, we are going to uh, give you a short uh, discussion about Bioclinica CTMS. Uh, we have presented that to, to this forum before, but we have something new that uh, we're going to share with you. So first of all, CTMS is on version 3.8, and uh, it has been commercially viable since 2006. So that's important because we have been through the rigors of more than 2,000 trials and have performed more than 600 data integrations. And with a CTMS system, uh, you know, when you're bringing in different data sources, it's in, the integrations are vital, right? It's only as good as the data getting in. So, uh, so all three of those things, very important. Now, Bioclinica CTMS, um, uh, you know, if you Google CTMS, uh, you're, you're going to get 30 different e-clinical companies saying that they do this. And, and there are 30, com 30 different companies that, uh, that, that can track your operational data through your trial. However, if you want to track studies, investigators, um, your clinical sites, and, uh, and your, 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 your individual studies across all studies, okay, then you need a relational database. So that's something different than an EDC system that's collecting operational data. Okay, this is a system that brings in data from all your EDC systems and paper studies and normalizes that information so that you can manage them consistently. Okay, so uh, when you're looking at Bioclinica CTMS, the, the competitors in this space are Impact, Medidata, Viva, and Oracle. All right. So uh, so, you know, you're in the right place if you're dealing with those vendors. Now, what makes us different from those vendors? Uh, the first one is that we have a bi-directional integration with SharePoint. So every database element is a native SharePoint content type. OK. And so so what that means is we're taking CTMS information and we're presenting it to the users in the form of SharePoint portals. Now, when your information is in the SharePoint database, what that does is it allows you to leverage the Microsoft Office suite of products. So now if you configure the documents into uh, SharePoint, now you can get CTMS data into those documents. So this is uh, the best use case is the monitor visit report where you have a Word document and, uh, and, and we simply configure it into our system and then all of the monitor visit data will go into that Word document. Your monitor will edit that uh, and uh, uh, and then um, resubmit it through the SharePoint workflow, and that data will end up back in Bioclinica CTMS. Uh, but you can you can leverage that across spreadsheets, Microsoft Project, and Outlook, right? So it's a very powerful tool, and you're presenting uh, CTMS to a lot of the users in the form of Microsoft documents and a SharePoint portal. So significant difference number one. Uh, significant difference number two is that uh, we do not take uh, six months to, to install our product. Um, it, we used to do that, and then we realized that the implementations look very much similar, and uh, and that we could uh, we we could come in quickly uh, and, uh, and and install a best practices model, and then allow you to change that over time to fit your process. 
but this saves a lot of time and allows us to get up and running within three weeks. Now, the integrations to the EDC system might take a little bit longer, but you will be up and trained in under a month with our system. And because we do that, we don't ask for a million dollars up front. Okay, we'll ask for a hundred thousand dollars to get this up and running. Uh, finally, we don't ask you to make a commitment at the beginning of the year. When you say 19 users, we don't talk you up to 25 because it's a price break at that point. We charge you at the end of each month based on what you actually used. And, uh, and so, uh, essentially this is a much more efficient model. You'll get in for a lower cost, for a lower time commitment and a lower sustained cost overall. Uh, and, uh, and so you've heard that before, but, uh, the big differentiator now is that we have leveraged SharePoint to create our ETMF document library. Okay. So this supports the DIA reference model. It is 21 CFR part 11 compliant and, uh, and, and it is a small incremental cost onto the CTMS. Once again, this is all deliverable within three weeks of you signing with Bioclinica. With that, let's take a look at the software so we can stay on time. Blaine, take it away. Great, thank you everybody. And you're able to hear me. I'm gonna be sharing my screen shortly here. And let me know if everyone can see my screen. You should see the study for my CTMS and in the SharePoint application. Does everybody see that? Fantastic. Okay. So this is, and thank you, Rich, for talking about our differentiator in a way that we use a CTMS as a portal for your study users, for your clinical staff and users. So you're able to use this portal for your day-to-day -day activities in a way to streamline activities for those roles. And of course it is role-based and permission-based. If I was a site monitor, I could go in and see my sites. I could look at the site calendar. I could go up and easily look at my open action items of sorts. And as well as I also have reporting capabilities. So we have enhanced reports, so I'll show that right now. And this is one where we can see for site activation. Now these are broken up into different functional areas. And I can even go down to specific data um, pools here. So if I wanted to go down to specific countries, I could, specific studies. All of this data is all drillable and down to for all this reporting. And it's all out of the box. There's no type of configuration needed. I can easily export these into multiple various modes that I need to, so I can interrogate that data further. But we also have the ability of looking at dynamic reporting capabilities through our site and enrollment planning. So this is also out of the box. It has an enrollment dashboard that talks about your subjects for your studies, your enrollments, what the statuses are. And if we looked at that certain data and we were talking about sites and initiation, we could go in and then see the trending for our initiation for sites. I can also take elements out. So for example, if I wanted to take out the baseline and just look at original plan versus actual, that's something that I'll be able to do all within the application itself. And also now you have this compartmentalized solution for your different end users. As far as our award-winning MVR and visit reports, I'll show you what one of those looks like, but you can easily create these templates just by going over here and it being a Microsoft um, application, I can go in and get create report and this is where we have out of the box reports for you to have in here. And not only any kind of trip reports, but you also have confirmation letters, follow up letters. And we'll make sure now that the data that flows from the CTMS core goes into those documents for your monitors, for example. So to give you a better understanding of what that looks like, I'm gonna show you one of those trip reports and how we look at that bi-directional data flow. So what we're looking at is an IMV. You can see in here now that the information has already been uh, pulled into the document. And so your monitor who's getting ready for this visit would just be able to put the information that pertains here. So for example, where it says linked contact full name, this is the list of contacts. 
that's in the database from the core CTMS that's pulling into the document. Now, with this being also a Word document, we can be able to go through a approval process. You can use track changes. You can review it. You can also make sure now that we have a template for them where they can easily just fill in the check boxes. You do have the ability to add in free text as well. So now they can go through, it cuts out duplicate data entry and making sure even if there's key things that you wanna have in the document pulled in, such as open uh, action items or protocol deviations, those are all gonna surface into the document. You can add new action items very easily by clicking on add new row. And once these are updated, that's also gonna update back to the core CTMS. This way you can make sure that after the approval process is done, the appropriate information will update. As well as if you have connectivity issues on site or unable to, that's okay because you can easily upload this document to your desktop and save it and reopen it when you get uh, the ability to have um, to have connectivity. With us, as Rich mentioned, being Part 11 compliant, you can e-sign this document, making sure it's all within the application, no type of in extra integration needed. So that's our visit reports. And looking at some reports here and going through the KPIs and looking at that same set of data that we look for site activations, I can go ahead and look at these out of the box configurable KPIs that show you now the different thresholds. You can see the goals to the values and all this information that can be updated based upon how you have those indicators for your KPIs. You can also edit those and make your own KPIs as well. Okay, so I wanna go through here and make sure now we talk about our ETMF capabilities. So we'll go into the ETMF, and there's really three main components that we look at from an ETMF capability. The first is your document library. And this is really important to understand some context behind this. This is really a combo package, so to speak, of how we use the ETMF inside the CTMS application. It's a module, it is with it, so it's not its own separate solution. However, there's a couple of key things that Rich mentioned before. It's gonna be DIA reference model using that, and we're also gonna make sure that it's part 11 compliant and has a full audit log. So we're gonna look at some of those features right now. And has everybody seen that? Okay, fantastic, okay, great. Sorry about that. So now that we go in here, we can see my ATMF document library. And this is where, of course, we're gonna have those documents compliantly saved in a secure manner within our CTMS. So you can see these different documents like a 1572 and so forth. Then we also have a ETMF task list. And we're gonna look at this a little, sep uh, little later separately, but this is where you can have workflows such as e-signatures that need to be done and be assigned to different staff members. And this is where that task list would appear. And then we have the ETMF document placeholders. And this is where I wanna start by going through and showing you the importance of this. And what this is specifically are, these are gonna be the configured placeholders that are going to be created for you around the documents for your study. So for example, if you had a statistics document that you needed for study five, a trial document, this is the placeholder that's gonna be configured in there that's going to make sure it's gonna save that specific information once the document gets uploaded. So you can see in here the source, and this is saying the document that's for site management has been completed. It's been e-signed. These placeholders are critical because now if you wanted to do any type of missing document report for the documents for your study that you need to upload, this is gonna be a way you can quickly be able to and uh, go down and surface that data. So how we get this information into the placeholder, such as where you see these paper clips, I'm gonna go ahead and upload one of these documents and I'll just pick one at random, a tracking information document. 
So you can see there's nothing there. There's no source. There's no sign, the version, nothing of that information is there. So we're going to populate that by going into the document library and uploading that document. So you can see how we reference that DIA reference model and be able to see that data flow through. So I'm going to click on upload. And as one mentioned before, it's a very simple process because we have um, we have the information specifically um, in this document uh, regarding that. So if I go into here and I can go ahead and click on, for example, tracking information site, I'm pulling that from my desktop. This is where I can put in my version comments and click OK. And this is where we're going to see those properties to support the DIA reference model. So, for example, you see here the domain type, the domain name, the content, the group, the artifact all supporting that specific type. So you have the content that's associated with a trial document. And then we're going to go in and put the artifact name first. So we can go, or excuse me, the group name that's associated with that document. In this case, it's going to be Statistics General. So we're going to go down and click on Statistics General in one second here. And actually, we want to have the group name that's going to be associated with that is going to be in here. So let me see this right here. OK, that's a trial in there. You can put the artifact name in here so you can have it go specifically to what that is. So, for example, if that's financials, disclosures or anything. It's been marked there. You can put in the document language that's associated with that if you want in here. You can put the document date in here. So if you put that in there and then you can have the information regarding that, the document source type. So what do we want to do with it? We want to hit electronically sign with that document. And then we can be able to check that in if we wanted to. And I could go ahead and I could just be able to approve that document. You could be able to sign it and whatever you wanted to do that. So I can go ahead and click on here if I wanted to click on check in. And one second here, I'm going to go back to group name here. And I want to go to statistics here in general. Perfect. And artifact name is tracking information. And once we hear here, we're going to click on check in. What this is going to do now is it's going to make sure we have the information here and it's checking that document in so we can go through that workflow. So I can go back through here and you can see now that the document says tracking info site. This is where I can see the new document is here. However, we have a workflow associated with this. So I'm going to go to advanced and we're going to be able to go through this. So, for example, if I wanted to check out that document, I would click on here. And then I can check that document out. It's in a draft form. So now I can go back into the document, click on advance. And now I can check this in. And what this is doing now is I'm publishing the document in here. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off and click on that. And now it's going to be going to put this into a approval process. And once again, all within the system and using the tools here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to approve this document. So this is how the approval process would work. I can go ahead and hit approved in here and hit OK. And what's happening in the background, it's going to do just a second, is it's going in and approving that process for the document. And there it goes. And now you can see the status is changing. This is going to be a live document. I can go back through here, click on approve. And now if I want to, I can electronically sign the document. By me electronically signing and keeping this part 11 compliant, what I'm doing now is I'm seeing the document here. I will have a list of the people that I can be able to assign this to, or I could actually physically put it in here just for time's sake. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I could CC it if I want to notify people. I could put a due date on it. And this is assigning the task to myself. Why this is important is now this would be sending a notification saying there's an e-signature that I need to do that's been emailed to me. Now it's been in progress. 
if I go back to that same workflow, I can go in and be able to make sure that I can electronically sign that. So if I go into the task list, you're going to see a new task appear that just started. And you're going to see my notification here. It showed up that I have a task. So I can go click here to open my task. And this is where I can simply go in, select the information here. And I can be able to e-sign this document and making sure now that it's going to be part 11 compliant. I can put in my credentials here. And I can put the reason for signing and go ahead and sign. And what's happening is it's now signing that document for me. And we're going to take a look there and we're going to be able to see that. Okay, and here we go. You have the document that's been signed. You have the PDF of the document that's been signed. And now as I go back full circle to the placeholder associated with that document, we should be able to see the appropriate information as we do with that. If I click on this specifically, you can see the version. You can see now that's been taken place. It's been e-signed. And if I click on that document, is everybody able to see the PDF that I'm bringing up? Fantastic. Okay. So in just to uh, be able to um, be able to go full circle, that's where we'll be able to um, stop sharing here. That's where you'll be able to make sure now we have a CTMS application where we're able to see the right information and making sure now that we have a way to have the ETMF inside that application so you have a secure and compliant way for all your documents. Any questions? Okay, I am going to stop sharing. Oh, is there a question for any of us? No, that was just me breathing. Okay, um, fantastic. Thank you for your time today, and I'm going to stop sharing, and I believe I am. Okay, doctor, we are ready? done and ready for break. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Richard. I, I, I do have just one quick question. So, so in, you know, you mentioned that you have a lot of competitors in this space. So, so what, what's your, your sweet spot in terms of uh, size of company and sort of, you know, the, the folks that you work with? Uh, so we, we work with a lot of, uh, of smaller companies, uh, but we also have big pharma companies on this product. Um, it, 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 lately, it's been these smaller companies starting up that want to start quickly without a, a, a large capital investment. That's, that's who's been attracted to this lately. And, uh, and that now that we've brought in uh, the ETMF ability, uh, it, it just, um, it's a much faster and less expensive way of, uh, of covering that aspect of your trial. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that that's, uh, that, you know, the, the simple things like that are actually really important that, that, you know, a lot of folks just just don't necessarily think about uh, uh, when they're when they're setting up their clinical trials. <laughs> but the, but that's that's uh, certainly a critical uh, piece of uh, uh, piece, of, piece of trial infrastructure that you absolutely need to have. Right. On. If, if, if money and time matter, you know, take a look at us. Yep. OK. Well, again, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your presentation. I know that you'll be back on later on this afternoon. I will. Well, thank you, Doctor. Uh, and, uh, and thank you, everyone out there. See you this afternoon. Thank you again, guys. And uh, before we go into our break, I'll just quickly show my screen um, for the networking. Um, a lot of our exhibitors have set up their uh, booth, most importantly. Um, so if I come over here. You guys can see on the left-hand side, underneath stage, we have the lobby where you can chat to users by clicking on the icon over here. You can go to the lounge area. You can see we have various tables set up here that you can grab a seat with. And also importantly, uh, please visit our exhibitors booth as well. Uh, I have one of them uh, within three, Wuxi, uh, GSSS Medical, and many others. So if you have a moment uh, during this break, uh, Please fit the thumb and uh, we'll regroup uh, in about half an hour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone.